as, as you might imagine, for, Bar for Barack, running for president is nothing compared to that first game of basketball with my brother Craig. I, I can't tell you how much it means to have Craig and my mom here tonight. Like, like Craig, I can feel my dad looking down on us, uh, just as I've felt his presence in every grace-filled moment of my life. And at six foot six, I've often felt like Craig was looking down on me too, literally. <laughs> but the truth is, both when we were kids and today, Craig wasn't looking down on me. He was watching over me. And he has been there for me every step of the way since that clear day in February 19 months ago when with little more than our faith in each other and a hunger for change, we joined my husband Barack Obama on the improbable journey that has led us to this moment. But each of us comes here also by way of our own improbable journey. I come here tonight as a sister, blessed with a brother who is my mentor, my protector, and my lifelong friend. And I come here as a wife who loves my husband and believes he will be an extraordinary president. And I come here as a mom as a mom whose girls are the heart of my heart and the center of my world. They're the first things I think about when I wake up in the morning and the last thing I think about before I go to bed at night. Their future and all our children's future is my stake in this election. And I come here as a daughter raised on the south side of Chicago by a father who was a blue collar city worker and a mother who stayed at home with my brother and me. My mother's love has always been a sustaining force for our family. And one of my greatest joys is seeing her integrity, her compassion, her intelligence reflected in my daughters. My dad was our rock. And although he was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis in his early 30s, he was our provider. He was our champion, our hero. But as he got sicker, it got harder for him to walk. It took him longer to get dressed in the morning. You know, but if he was in pain, he never let on. He never stopped smiling and laughing, even while struggling to button his shirt, even while using two canes to get himself across the room to give my mom a kiss. He just woke up a little earlier and he worked a little harder. He and my mom poured everything they had into me and Craig. It was the greatest gift a child could receive. Never doubting for a single minute that you're loved and cherished and have a place in this world. And thanks to their faith and their hard work, we both were able to go to college. So I know firsthand from their lives and mine that the American dream endures. And you know, what struck me when I first met Barack was that even though he had this funny name and even though he had grown up all the way across the continent in Hawaii, his family was so much like mine. He was raised by grandparents who were working class folks just like my parents and by a single mother who struggled to pay the bills just like we did. And like my family, they scrimped and saved so that he could have opportunities that they never had for themselves. And Barack and I were raised with so many of the same values. Like, you work hard for what you want in life. That your word is your bond, that you do what you say you're gonna do. That you treat people with dignity and respect, even if you don't know them, and even if you don't agree with them. And Barack and I set out to build lives guided by these values and to pass them on to the next generation because we want our children and all children in this nation to know that the only limit to the height of your achievements is the reach of your dreams and your willingness to work hard for them. And as our friendship grew, 
and I learned more about Barack. He introduced me to work, the work that he'd done when he first moved to Chicago after college. You see, instead of going to Wall Street, Barack uh, went to work in neighborhoods that had been devastated by the closing of steel plants. Jobs dried up. And Barack was invited back to speak to people from those neighborhoods about how to rebuild their community. And the people gathered there together that day were ordinary folks doing the best they could to build a good life. See, they were parents uh, trying to get by from paycheck to paycheck, grandparents trying to get it together on a fixed income, men frustrated that they couldn't support their families after jobs had disappeared. You see, those folks weren't asking for a handout or a shortcut. See, they were ready to work. They wanted to contribute. They believed like you and I believe that America should be a place where you can make it if you try. And Barack stood up that day and he spoke words that have stayed with me ever since. He talked about the world as it is and the world as it should be. And he said that all too often we accept the distance between the two and we settle for the world as it is, even when it doesn't reflect our values and aspirations. But he reminded us that we also know what the world should like, look like. He said, we know what fairness and justice and opportunity look like. And he urged us to believe in ourselves, to find the strength within ourselves to strive for the world as it should be. And isn't that the great American story? It's, it's the story of men and women gathered in churches and union halls, in high school gyms, and people who stood up and marched and risked everything they had refusing to settle, determined to mold our future into the shape of our ideals. And it's because of their will and determination that this week we celebrate two anniversaries. The 88th anniversary of women winning the right to vote and the 45th anniversary and the 45th anniversary of that hot summer day when Dr. King lifted our sights and our hearts with his dream for our nation. And I stand here today at the cross currents of that history, knowing that my piece of the American dream is a blessing hard won by those who came before me, all of them driven by the same conviction that drove my dad to get up an hour early each day to painstakingly dress himself for work, the same conviction that drives the men and women I've met all across this country.